Uh, thank you. Our next speaker is uh, Naro Ao. Naro is from Nagaland, India. She's a woman living with HIV and a drug user. She started in the field of HIV and drugs in May 2005, engaging in outreach activities um, with uh, both drug users and community of people living with HIV in her hometown. She also worked with APN Plus in the capacity of women coordinator. She has represented women who use drugs from Asia in various national and regional platform, highlighting the specific issues faced by women who use drugs in Asia and advocated for these issues to be addressed. Currently, she sits in the executive board of UNPUD, the Asian Network of People Who Use Drugs. Naro. Thank you, Michelle, for the introduction. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, I would like to start with uh, some of the achievements made by people who use drugs in this movement. The involvement of uh, people who use drugs in advocacy and implementation has no doubt resulted in many positive change in many areas related to harm reduction. Example, distribution of uh, needle and syringe is acceptable today because of the involvement of us in the advocacy. And um, another example is like, it's from India, I, which I wanted to highlight. Community has first initiated naloxone in, in harm reduction program without any external support because it saved lives. So there was no funding, but the peers, we know that we have to save our friend's life and that's how it, 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 it initiated uh, uh, among the peers and this was used as an evidence for advocacy and now government of India is providing naloxone in all the uh, government hospitals, which is a great achievement. And this is, this is achieved because of the involvement of drug users in the advocacy and, and programming. And um, similarly, there are other very good examples from across the countries globally of issues being able to address by people who use drugs. Also a Although there is a lot needs to be done, but, but still, uh, something has been achieved because of the involvement. Evidence has also shown that community-led or peer-led intervention has resulted in many best practices and innovative ways. It is effective because it involves trust and we solve our problem out of the box, thinking out of the box. Uh, the journey of drug users' movement started at a very grassroots level. If you, if you study a drug user, life, the journey started at a very grassroots level, at the implementation as a peer educator mostly, or an outreach worker, and slowly made it to a higher level, I mean, involving in policy dialogues and all. And in this journey, in this journey, we left, we've missed the women, a, 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 a population, which is the women who use drugs. If we, if you look into the act, leadership, role that people who use drugs are playing in Asian context. How many women activists we have in Asia who are drug users? Um, it's almost 20 years and it's almost nil. And why is harm reduction program not gender, gender sensitive and why hasn't it been not addressed till now? It's because of lack of involvement. So yes, there has been achievement because of the involvement of people who use drugs, but in one area, a big hole has been left out. And so, um, beginning with that, I want to share some challenges faced by women who use drugs in our region. Number one is many people say that it's hidden or not, it's, it's hidden and invisible. No, we are visible. We are not hidden, the only thing is we are, we are invisible to others, to people. When implementation for drug, uh, harm, when harm reduction implementation started, implementation of harm reduction programs started, it is for the people who use drugs. And maybe the women were left behind because 
of number one, the double stigma. It is not easy to come out as a drug user. I'm a drug user, and for me, it was very difficult. Coming out, of, coming out in public to, uh, and saying that I am HIV positive was much, much easier for me than saying I'm a drug user. So in that situation, it is, unless there are certain things that, uh, certain services or activities which can attract the women who use drugs, besides just needle and syringe, uh, providing needle and syringe or condoms or um, referral services for OSD and other treatment, there is nothing and that's why, what is the use of coming out? I don't want to come out, I, I just want to be secure in my play, own place. So it's not about hidden or invisible, it's, we, are, we are very much there, it's just that it's time we need to be, we are there so it's time people need to see us. Uh, harm, as I said, harm reduction services were provided to all people who use drugs, irrespective of genders, young or old. And, um, but in the process, in the process, a lot of uh, capacities have been built of people who use drugs. And in that area of capacity building, women who use drugs were overlooked. They were, they were, never, they were never there. And uh, it, they, were, they were overlooked in terms of implementation, at the, at the implementation level, in terms of representation, in terms of taking a leadership role. And that is why today, even after almost 20 years of HIV and drug use movement in our region, we still, we, our, 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 our region still lack uh, women-specific or gender-specific program in harm reduction. Our involvement was not given importance, and that is why women in leadership role as an activist and, or an advocate is almost nil in our region. Uh, programs are designed through findings from research and experts. And from research and expert brings this to the designing level. And since the women who use drugs were not involved at the designing level, maybe that is one reason why we don't have services that we need in the existing harm reduction program. But very lately, the involvement of uh, women who use drugs is felt, in, is felt and platform is many areas, but again, when it comes to investment, nobody wants to invest in us. Number one example is how many women from Asia are here in this harm reduction conference when this conference, international conference, is happening here in Asia. We have women activists in the countries. Where are, why, are not, why aren't they there? Here, I mean, in this conference. I don't know why, why, why donors or investors or whoever, why don't you want to, I don't know why, what is the reason behind not wanting to invest in us? But that is one. I was actually expecting a lot of women, at least from this part of the world, because it's happening here. But it's very sad to see that it's, it's, it's very, very, very few. This shouldn't be happening. It, sh it should be more than this, but, then, but that's, that's one example. Um, I was once told that um, number of women who use drugs is very less as compared to men. So designing a program just for a few numbers is not cost effective. Seriously. I believe we are all in this movement in order to save lives and creating an environment where human rights of people who use drugs are respected. So women who use drugs are not human because we are, we are, we are not human because we are few in numbers compared to men. Whether it is one or thousands or millions, it is about human lives not about numbers. So I appeal to everyone here that please open your eyes because we are very much alive and present among you. Start recognizing the issues that we bring and invest on us too. Otherwise tomorrow, no matter how many good things you have done, how many positive things you have been able to make, I mean you have been able to contribute, you will still question your own accountability in this movement.
by leaving us behind. If you leave us behind, you will question your own accountability. And also, I agree with Rajiv that it is never too late to start, at least for us, women who use drugs. So we as women who use drugs will be expecting a lot of positive things to bring after this conference, which can definitely be a game changer in this movement. Thank you. Thank you very much, Naro. Message very clear. Um, questions and comments from the audience, please. Yeah. Can you pass the microphone here? Hi. Um, I worked with a lot of women um, when I was uh, working in Luton back in uh, uh, London. Sorry, my name's Mags. I'm the um, coordinator for Euro Input. And um, one of the things I found um, amongst the women from the Asian uh, populations was the um, dreadful stigma that they had to live with and the fear in coming out as a, as a woman, as an Asian woman who um, was using drugs and uh, one of the um, innovative ideas that we came up with in order to be able to attract the women to our service was putting on um, health days Ad and um, we would uh, for example um, advertise the fact that we would be having um, uh, a, a, a sexual health and family planning day and behind that we would actually be having sessions that were linked to um, sexual abuse or other types of abuse which might be some of the underlying reasons why the women were using drugs in the first place and then we'd be able to signpost them on for further support etc etc because we found that in order for us to be able to provide interventions um, we had to do it in secret of their husbands and their communities. So just wanted to share that with you really, um, just for ideas for the future. And good luck with it, yeah. Um, thank you, uh, thank you for the yes. As, uh, it, it's, it's true, like as an Asian woman, coming out as a drug user, it's, it's, it's not easy. It's, it's seriously not easy. I grew up with five brothers and I have more male friends than fe female friends and um, my peers, my drug using peers are all my cousin brothers. Uh, we, are all, we are 12 of us who use, we are only what, four of us alive now. So because I am a woman, I'm a girl those days, when it was time for me to go for treatment, I mean when I was caught by my parents, they, they said, if you were a boy, we would have sent you for treatment. So I never got treatment. So that is the scenario. My, my cousins were sent for treatment, not me because I'm a girl. And it's not acceptable. That, it's not acceptable that your daughter, your, your, your sister is doing drugs. It's sorry, it's not. So coming out, as a drug user, as I said, it was very easy for me to, compare to coming out as a drug user, but it was very easy for me to come out as a woman, as a woman living with HIV, it was very easy. Now, it, it is because of stigma. Again, another thing is it's also because of the motivation, the peer support that we get in the PLHIV field. HIV field. We get lots of counseling, we get, we get lots of motivation, I mean, we are, we are motivated, we are mentored, we are provided counseling, I mean, we, we, are, sent, we are being sent for exposures, I mean, we have been invested in the, the HIV sector, not the harm reduction sector, I'm not talking about harm reduction sector, but I am today, well, because well, who I am, I'm able to, I'm here today speaking because of the investment made by my, by my friends, I mean those in, in, in HIV field. So if, if the same level of commitment, the same level of investment, the same level of um, support be shown to women who use drugs, it, 
stigma can be, you know, it, it can be overcome. It's just about positive, con I mean, like positive thing. I mean, it's just about positive um, way of life. It has, to, but then this has to be shared, which is not done. It's just about, okay, we, need, we have to draw your blood. It's, it's sentinel surveillance time, this time. They are after us only when it's, about, it, when it's time for testing, for HIV, mostly. So I, I, I seriously believe that if, if women who use drugs are being kind of supported or mentored or, or invested as people living with HIV, women living with HIV, I believe that a lot of women will come out, a lot. Thank you. There's one question here, um, right there. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I'm Asian woman. I'm from Nepal. I'm working as an as advocate. So I really like your presentation. Not only related to drug, even in the courtroom, even in the court, if there are women, even uh, if they are arrested for simple theft, like there will be the crowd in the courtroom. And if we talk about murder, there will be like hundreds of people. And normally, like, I look even the cases of the drug users and all. So if any uh, girl or woman is arrested, they all the time cover their face with the soul. And the first request would be, please don't call any of my relative of my friends. So that's true. So I know these, these all are the problems in most of our Asian countries. So what you suggest, how to work, how to deal with them, how to deal with these issues, how to deal with their parents, how to convince them, how to convince court, how to convince police, how to convince prison officials, how to convince themselves, how to make people understand. So what, like, what can we do together? Because it's the common problem of all, the, I think almost all the Asian countries. Uh, what can we do, do together? We have to start, I think we have to start from the basic, from the scratch to address the, the issues of women who use drugs. I, I, I can't say this, but then we, we have to start from the beginning. That is, start by counseling, peer counseling, so that the women drug users are motivated, they, 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 become, um, they become more empowered. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, I, think, I think that is the, I mean, that is the start, starting point. That we, we cannot just go and do advocacy for, for issues of women who use drugs just like that. We have to develop, we have to build the capacity of the women who use drugs for them to come out and, 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 and present their issues. So, and in order to do that, like I said, their capacities have to be built. And to build their capacities, we need support. And I believe that we will get support. And that is the best, I mean, that is the basis. We have to start from the scratch. Thank you. That's, that's what I was going to say, and that was part of the reason why we would have these sessions in, in, in secret, um, because the whole um, motivation behind that was to um, empower the women, develop their self-confidence and their self-efficacy, so that as a group, they would then feel empowered to take ownership and to actually speak out. And that's where you have to begin with the women, but you can only do that by giving them the skills in the first place. And we could only give them the skills by putting on these open days or these sexual health days or whatever you wanted to call them so that the men in the community um, would quite happily allow their wives to attend these sessions because they didn't realize that really behind closed doors we were addressing other things which were related to drug use. Okay, thank you so much. It, out of respect for time for the other speakers, we're going to move on.